first idea is Integris, and I see they are all about, or partly about, removing contaminants in semiconductor making. Yeah, so as semiconductors have got smaller and smaller and smaller, and this is sort of a picks and shovels idea. So you can mm -hmm. go, go buy NVIDIA, we own some Broadcom, there's lots of semiconductors you can buy. Or um, you can look at the companies that, regardless of who the next great chip manufacturer is, mm -hmm. will be supplying the chemicals that make Moore's Law continue to be a reality. Moore's Law is that the idea, the idea is that uh, the speed of uh, semiconductors will double every 18 months. Well, mm -hmm. we're now at the limits of what the current materials can do. So how do you actually make them and make them error-free? So um, Integris... Uh, is one of those companies, and actually a, a very significant company. Now, there's a lot of players in this, but we do feel that Integris being one of the dominant players, a lot of the smaller players will leave the business and there will be a significant margin uh, expansion because it's a, it's a must-have mm -hmm. for a must-have industry. And there, our, our feeling is that they're going to be one of the, the key players in this. So ENTG, mm -hmm. I'm going to probably give you three names that most people probably don't have in their portfolio. So this is one of them. And then ESAB, and they're big in welding and cutting equipment. Yeah, again, like Stella Jones, you'd think this is one of the more boring businesses on the face of the earth. But the uh, what they do is they um, not only just provide welding equipment, but mm -hmm. if you want to bring manufacturing back to North America. I think we have, sorry, Brian, I think we, we jumped ahead there to your third pick. I'm not sure if we have the chart of ESAB. Anyway. That's um, okay. Well, we, I can do okay. either one. ESAB okay. um, uh, has the, uh, um, if you're a, uh, if you're wanting to build a factory in the United States, and there's going to be more onshoring, mm -hmm. hopefully for the United States there'll be more friend shoring. We'll do some up in Canada as well uh, that we don't have to pay $13 billion to make happen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's an aside. But ESAB does the automation of welding. So if I mean, there's not that many skilled people that can, can do all of the work that's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And there is a big, so it, it's really a play on automation. Sounds boring welding. Really, it's a play on automation on the onshoring of American production. Okay, apparently it's an American-Swedish industrial company. Yes, hence that's why it sounds a little like Saab. Okay, and then finally, Vulcan Materials. What do they do? Again, uh, we're, we're, this is literally picks and shovels. They are road builders. Oh, yeah. They, they make asphalt. And in places like Texas and Florida, mm -hmm. and really all over the United States, they, the road construction, I mean, obviously not in Toronto. <laughs> Actually, no, obviously in Toronto, where the University Avenue is still a disaster. But huh. there is so much infrastructure building going on as the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act and whatever else is coming out in America. That I don't know how spending government money in reduces inflation, but let's mm -hmm. leave that. Uh, but Vulcan stands to benefit considerably from the building and rebuilding of roads in America. So both uh, ESAB and Vulcan Materials are about the rebuilding of American uh, uh, infrastructure. They, um, yeah, they're a huge supplier of aggregate, crushed yeah. stone, sand, and gravel. Yeah. And you would think there probably are barriers to entry. It's going to be expensive to build a quarry. Well, that, that's, 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 that's the thing. One of the classic things, if, if you own the quarry, you, you, have the, uh, you have dominance within however long it takes to deliver it. What's it, 50 miles, 100 miles, yes. 500 miles? Yeah. If you own the quarry in that area because you already own the quarry. So it's, it's that business, but it's that quarry taken nationally and with the benefit of a lot of government spending. So I've been a really big advert for, advocate for governments, this, uh, yes. this program. This is very strange. Well, of course, we, the free market is in many ways a myth. I mean, the government plays such a big role. Mm. It's an economist fantasy in some ways. But, but it looks good on the models. Yes, the, 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 the invisible hand has a government <laughs> bill in, in, inserted in it. And the beautiful uh, supply and demand curves. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Brendan. First idea, TC Energy. Yeah, so we've talked a lot about natural gas today and the associated infrastructure and uh, TC Energy being, in my opinion, um, the premier natural gas infrastructure company in North America. Can't believe it yields over 7.2%. Mm. Um, you know, there's some overhangs with Coastal Gas Link, which I think we're beyond the negative surprise portion of that story now. And, you know, they need to do some asset sales to fund their growth. Well, that's not a bad thing when it's already got a dividend yield of 7%, but there's an overhang that they might have to issue equity. I don't think that will happen either. Mm -hmm. um, there's also an overhang with these companies that says, you know, they're out of growth. There's no more growth left for these companies. These are stranded assets. That was sort of a school of thought that picked up a lot of 
play during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, now I think that's behind us as well. Again, when we talk about going from 14 BCF a day of export capacity on this continent to somewhere north of 30 in natural uh, gas, in natural yeah, yeah. gas alone um, over the next, call it, decade, decade and a half, there's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done to support feeding all that gas mm -hmm. to those projects. Um, TC Energy has the premier gas gathering asset in Western Canada. They have uh, a, a tremendous amount of gas gathering in the Marcellus as well, which is the you know the largest shale basin in the United States. Um, just think it's incredibly well set up. Uh, the new management team has been quiet uh, since Russ Gerling left, um, but I think even with tepid dividend growth of you know two to three percent and tepid share price growth of say one to two percent, you're looking at a nine ten percent compounded annual return with. You know how much risk is there at this price? I don't think very much. So um, I think it's an incredibly attractive investment. We talked about TFSA earlier. This would be mm -hmm. the first choice I would put in there right there today. Wow. Okay. And if I group the bus maker, now they don't pay a dividend right now. Yeah, they've been forced to cut their dividends. So this has okay. been, you know, a company that has gone wrong for us in the past few years. But uh, we don't think the f a few years makes a company. You know, this company was sixty, sixty-five dollars a share at the highs in you know the middle of the last decade. Mm -hmm. um, um, their opportunity, I think, continues to grow. They are the only manufacturer of EV buses in North America that, that can do EV only for the Buy America provisions in, in the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. Um, Nova Bus, uh, their main competitor, um, or one of their main competitors, just exited the U.S. They're still in Canada, mm -hmm. but they exited the U.S. business. Um, business has been tough. There's no question. Supply chain, COVID, mm -hmm. all of that has been tough for the company. Um, but we think it's better days are ahead now. Um, and the order book remains incredibly strong. Um, so we think it's, you know, less competition, more opportunity. You know, if you look at how Tesla's valued on the EV side, um, not that this will ever get that type of valuation, but it should be getting a better valuation than it is today. So we were purchasing quite a bit of stock in the $9 range at the end of the year. Um, it's $11 today with some of the financing issues sorted out and I uh, think it can go significantly higher, um, you know, in the next few years. Okay, and then finally, Emera. Uh, Emera, of course, got into a face-off with the, the provincial government, didn't it, uh, over uh, a price increase they wanted to push through. Yeah, and this is a theme I talk a lot about normally. We haven't talked about it a lot today, um, but it's just the electrification theme in North America. So NFI contributes to that in mm -hmm. some ways. Um, but just the demand for electricity in North America going higher. Um, Amira. You know, yeah, they've had some issues in Nova Scotia. They've gotten a bit of a stay on that, and I think that will ultimately oh, okay. be sorted out um, in, in a favorable way. But what I'm really looking at for Amira is their um, southwestern business, Tampa and, and uh, Tampa Electric is the, the company, um, and New Mexico I do, I believe they're in as well. Um, those population centers are growing at a, at a fast rate combined with the fact that they're needing more electricity per capita. So more people plus more electricity per person means regulated rate-based utility growth for the, the company. Um, it's come off more recently with rates going up and, and that Nova Scotia Power ruling we talked about earlier. So mm -hmm. it's over a five yield. You can buy a utility over a five yield today. You know, to me, you know, you can buy, you can put money in cash at a 5% yield or you can buy a utility with the same, you know, better on an after-tax basis, but also with that potential growth ahead that lasts, you know, to me that lasts decades. That's a decades long story. Um, so I like it on that basis and I uh, think you'll be pretty happy, you know, looking back on that five years, 10 years, 15 years, uh, every time you look back on that purchase if you made it today. 5.1%. 5, 5 Thank you very much, Ryan. Thanks, Andy. Let's get to some stocks to watch on Javid's radar. Ivanhoe Mines is the first one. Yeah, so we talked about that story with copper and copper stocks. Love this chart, looks fantastic, ready to break out to new all-time highs here. Really positive and part of our thesis this year, which has been recommending copper stocks to clients. So really like the setup into the end of the year, uh, remain you know very bullish, and this is a name we'd be looking to add. Okay, National Bank of Canada. Yeah, and so this was fitting into our financials theme into the end of the year. Here's another stock, uh, break broke out to new highs here, which was, uh, sorry, I think we roughly made marginal new highs here, if I recall correctly, but the bottom line is here, we're testing the upper end of this range. It's the leader in the big six Canadian banks. Really positive, we like financials into the end of the year. Fantastic chart, what's not to love? Right, and I'm just looking there, yeah. Fair number of holds, but of course the stocks had a great run. Yeah, 
So if, if we're correct, though, that we've got this nice run into the end of the year, then Nationals should definitely participate in this up leg into the end of the year. And they have a fairly high weighting proportionately in capital markets. Yeah. Um, and then finally, Franco Nevada. We haven't really talked about gold. Are you as keen on gold as you would be on base metals? Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I like the base metals, I, I would say, more because of where we are in the cycle. But we are seeing signs that gold and gold stocks want to break out. They've kind of been locked in this sideways trading range. Franco is a, a good example of this. And here you can see Franco has been testing the upper end. And we've got that ascending triangle pattern here again. So over the course of the last uh, week and a half, uh, or sorry, sorry, I should say two weeks, uh, the gold stocks look like they're putting in an intermediate term or multi-month low. That's setting up nicely for a, a run higher here. So to us, it looks like Franco is set up to test this 200 level. And especially if we can break out above these highs here back in 2020, that would really be really positive. So we highlighted gold at the start of the year as one of our best ideas. And so the stocks continue to uh, improve here. It's interesting. What about the US dollar? Maybe if we put up a five-year chart for the yep. US dollar. The US dollar has been under pressure it as has. people yeah. decide the Fed is nearing the end of the rate increases. Exactly. And so what our view is, is the same as uh, for rates, is we think rates are going to be in the sideways trading range, similar to crude over the course of the next year and a half, two years. We think the dollar is going to do the same. So now that that sort of headwind mm -hmm. is lifting in terms of higher rates and higher dollar, uh, we think that that is going to, you know, be positive for commodities in so much as that that big headwind has been removed. So looking for a sideways trading range over the course of the next year and a half, two years for the dollar. And uh, certainly um, gold stocks up something like uh, counting dividends up something like 11 percent this year. Yeah, that's good. not bad. Uh, yeah. Beating the market. Yeah. Javid, always great hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Top pick number one, Thermo Fisher Scientific. Yeah, um, so just the top picks, a couple of them we're making here are sort of, they're leaders in technology uh, in sectors that really are solid but not hot. And so Thermo Fisher is the largest uh, player in devices that are required for medical research and a whole plethora of things. They're a $44 billion behemoth, and they have put this together by making hundreds of acquisitions over the last few years. And uh, since uh, 2006, they've been making these acquisitions and they've been quite successful at integrating them and, and building an integrated company. And so now with, uh, we, we're excited because there's been a lot of scientific breakthroughs that are lying. Gonna, you know, hopefully we're, you know, they'll save you and me, give us another 10 years of life uh, at the end of it. But, mm -hmm. uh, and so Thermo Fisher is, you know, it's, uh, so the pick and if you go the pick and shovels what made money in the gold mines, Thermo Fisher is a guy that's gonna they're gonna make money for sure in this uh, cycle. So we really we like the stock for that reason, and it's uh, you know it plugs away. It's getting revenue growth of uh, eight to ten percent. Uh, they're continuing to get margin expansion across it. So you know it's a nice solid company. It's not cheap, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we think we'll see ten to fifteen percent growth out of this stock per annum for the next five six years. So it's a Low risk way to play it. Qualcomm. And Qualcomm, same, the same idea. Qualcomm's obviously the leader in cell phone chip technology, um, but they're also a leader in ADAS or you know assisted driving for uh, uh, automated cars. And um, as these technologies spread, uh, Qualcomm is going to, we believe, will do quite well. The stock's uh, cheap. It's got a nice two percent dividend, and again, um, you know, it's. Uh, had a bit of a sell-off here uh, as uh, the cell phone business matured, and actually, we've seen, I think we've actually seen a drop in cell phone in cell phone volumes globally, or at least at the higher end where their chips are, they make the big money. And there's been some competition with Apple making their own chip. But if you recall about a year and a half ago, Apple had to pay them billions in, in you know, violating patents. So uh, we really like this stock for just you know the general growth mm -hmm. as more and more cars get uh, you know. As, and just think of the infrastructure needed for cars. If we're going to have an accident, your car has to talk to mine, it has to talk through a network, right? That's got to be. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Qualcomm's all over this stuff. Cars will just figure it out between them. Yeah, uh, let's we hope have so. an accident. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I see that the bosses of Intel and Qualcomm were headed to Washington trying to get the Biden administration to 
ratchet down restrictions on exporting chips to China. Yeah, yeah, it's such a yeah. big market for them. Yeah, and you know, China's now the leader in electric vehicles, and this is what uh, oh. these guys support big time. And uh, um, you know, so you know, that's, I guess, there's some fear of losing the lead in electric vehicles to China on a global basis, anyway. Yeah, that's I mean, it's... Tesla's way up at the top end, but in just so you know, the commodity, you know, the vehicles, the Chinese are dominating it. So. I wonder, will we see Chinese electric cars coming in here? Uh, yes. I've seen them on Caribbean islands, so yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electric cars? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, why not bring them in, I yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and we've got, oh, this is interesting. So is this an, a mining play? Yeah, so it's again the pick and shovel type story. Um, major drilling, yeah. Yeah, major drilling is the leading drilling company for uh, exploration on the face of the earth. Uh, right now, copper's down. It's about three bucks, but if this electric revolution is going to happen, we're going to need we need a, a plethora of new copper mines. Uh, gold prices hitting new highs. That means they'll be drilling more. You know, we start more and more exploration drilling. The company's got fifty million dollars of cash and no debt, and um, selling about ten times earnings. And uh, street targets range from fifteen to twenty bucks, and uh, it, you know, mm -hmm. sort of. A, I believe it. Can, you know, the, the move should be up, and it should be nice. Like it's this is a home run swing. We spoke. Uh, sorry, we, we spoke yesterday to the outgoing boss of Newcrest, yes. which is being taken over by Newmont, mm -hmm. and she says a lot of people have no idea of how much more copper and how many new copper mines yeah. we're going to need. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. Multiples of what we currently and, have. And the drilling cycle, you know, um, the last one end, like these things come, everybody gets money, the price goes up, all the mining companies go look for it, and the last cycle really ended in you know quite a while ago, twenty. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2014 or something, and so you know there's a there's a lot of need for this. So the stock should really work. Let's put up a five-year chart for uh, copper. It's closer to four bucks than than yeah. uh, um, three right now, but mm -hmm. it, it has come down for yeah, sure. Yeah, off of, yeah, yeah. Not, there's a five-year chart. Mm -hmm. so, so you know, yeah, yeah it's, it's this is just the on the on the way up. It's it's just the slowdown in the economy that's a, yeah like hitting up that uh, we're. And just the scale of these copper mm. mines we're going to need. Yeah, well, yeah, and the whole electric grid needs to be replaced. Yeah, and you know, you know, a lot of the grid was built you know, during the pre-depression. You know, the yeah. original stuff. And so, and I'm told a lot some of these transformers are still from that time period. You know, they, they keep them there till they burn out, and you know, some of them just keep going. So, I guess yeah. they built things to last, yeah. to last yeah. back in yeah. those days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything yeah. seems to burn out within yeah. six yeah. months now. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. sorry, I'm exaggerating. Thank you very much for uh, joining us, Bruce. You're welcome. Welcome back to Market Call. Time now for top picks from Cole Katrin. During the course of the show, uh, Cole, you took a question on a chip stock. I think it might have been Qualcomm and said you had another one that you'd be talking about right now, and that uh, stock is Advanced Micro Devices. Right, yeah, so AMD stock. Um, yeah, prior to coming on the show, it was kind of consolidating around like $115, $117 with yesterday's kind of uh, tough day for the tech stocks. Um, it's come down now to around $110, $111. So um, to me, um, you know, you, there's a lot of hype around this AI craze right now. And uh, certainly NVIDIA is probably the clubhouse leader um, in that space. But uh, companies like AMD aren't really that far behind in, in terms of valuation uh, potential upside that you can get as compared to maybe a company like NVIDIA. I think that there's value to be had uh, in AMD. So um, I could see the stock moving up uh, upwards of around $150, which uh, would be a nice return on investment from current levels at around 110. And uh, as long as our growth uh, strategy kind of stays intact, where um, you know some of these more tech-oriented, growth-oriented companies are going to lead the charge, I could certainly see a company like AMD um, performing quite well. OK, Amazon, number two. Yeah, so obviously uh, the e-commerce re retailer, um, you know, I'm not really going out on a limb. It's not a name that people don't know a lot about, but I just think that over the last little while, um, they've altered their business. They've really focused on cutting costs, um, and they're doing this at the same time while diversifying their business, being uh, building out their uh, web services segment, which is getting bigger and bigger. And so um, just the way the consumer is moving, um, I think that people are obviously going to watch what they're spending. And I think a company like Amazon is a benefactor of that, where people are hunting a little bit more for deals. And um, I think that just uh, in regards to the big tech names, uh, it's lagged a little bit, even though it has performed well. Um, so 
I could see a little bit of a catch-up trade coming here over uh, the next three, four months uh, as we head into uh, the end of the year. How important is Amazon Web Services, which is its cloud uh, computing yeah. business, to uh, profit growth at Amazon? And how important is it to the multiple that the stock trades at in terms of uh, investor attention? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's probably one of the more focused on segments now um, because there's certainly upside on the retail and e-commerce platform, but the significant growth area is going to be the web services and what they're doing in the cloud and any AI generation that they're building out from there. Um, we've certainly seen it with companies like Microsoft and other of the big heavyweights. So I would expect that Amazon will continue to blaze kind of down that path. And I think it will be a big benefit. Uh, it will have a big impact on what the stock does moving forward. Okay, the final topic is an interesting one. You mentioned in our initial conversation, you thought there might be dynamics in the current stock market that would benefit small cap stocks. And right. in fact, your last uh, pick is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. Yeah, so um, I just think that, you know, most of the main indexes now are about five to six or 7% off their all time highs, whereas the IWM is still closer to 20%. Um, so that's a fairly big gap where normally that gap is going to be bridged a little bit. And so over the next little while, as uh, this market rally continues, uh, and I think we're starting to see it even right now, where we're starting to see a little bit of a rotation away from some of the big tech names from, you know, the S&P 500, and you're seeing it move to the Dow. Um, so further from there would be some of the small cap indexes and specifically, you know, later in the year where some of the fund managers are trying to play catch up. I think that you could see a bid on uh, companies in the small cap and that would push the index as a whole up and I do like the index as a whole versus individual names just because you're getting a little bit of diversity in a higher risk uh, segment. Okay, Cole, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. That's Cole Catcher. His top picks again, AMD, Amazon and the iShares, Russell 2000 ETF.